Okay, uh, my parents, Fanny Finston, lived site in Sydney. I lived site, uh, we're both teachers, so from a young age, I liked to like study and stuff, and I also knew by the time around sixth, seventh grade that I wanted to be a writer, so I practiced that a lot. I grew up in Rigo Park, a neighborhood in Queens, New York, which was like a broke neighborhood, but we still had plenty of supplies to survive, because of how I lived. Um, when I was in high school, the Ford Foundation program let me skip my last year. So I went straight from uh, being a junior to going to Columbia University. So I was like super smart, you know? And uh, I earned my bachelor's degree in 1957 at the age of 19. In, in 1959, I received a master's degree from a journalism school. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I moved to California for a little bit, but then I moved back to Queens just to be a, uh, uh, I had a job at the New York Times as a sports illustrator. And so I talk, I got to interview a lot of people, including uh, Muhammad Ali and other great sports players. And um, yeah, that was cool. Um, I stayed with the newspaper for 14 years. During this time, I co-authored uh, the N-Word book, that was pretty cool. Uh, published The uh, Masculine Mystique in 1966. I also write my first novel, The Contender, in 1967. And uh, after that, I started writing TV uh, screenplays and uh, like more books. And then I became a professor at college, and three years later, I became a radio commentator. So that was pretty cool. Um, Play the video now. I've never seen this video, so it might not correspond with like what I'm doing. So, hope it does. I was in Miami Beach to cover Clay's first fight against Sonny Liston. He was a 7 to 1 underdog. The New York Times real boxing writer didn't think it was worth his time. So the paper sent another kid down. Lucky me. It was the big break of my career. That week, the Beatles were in America for the beginning of their first American tour. The champ, Sonny Liston, refused to pose with them. He took one look and said, who are those sisters? So the Beatles ended up at Clay's gym, trying to get a photo off with him. Clay was late, and when the Beatles tried to leave, guards pushed them up into a dressing room and pushed me along with them. They were cranky, cursing, predicting how Liston would knock Clay out, the little wanker. I wrote it all down. I felt like the fifth Beatles. And then suddenly, the locker room door burst open and Cassius Clay filled the doorway. The Beatles and I gasped. He was so much bigger than he had looked in pictures. He seemed to glow and he was laughing. Hello there, Beatles, he roared. We should do some road shows together. Make some money. The Beatles followed Clay out to the boxing ring. If I hadn't known that, I would have thought they had choreographed the whole thing. The Beatles lined up, and Clay pretended to punch them. They fell down like dominoes. A few nights later, Clay handled Liston almost as easily as he had handled the Beatles. The who? Because that first day, after he had finished boxing, he was in that dressing room getting his rug down, and he beckoned to me to come over, and he whispered, so who won those little sissies? They were all the greatest in my book, an accidental portrait. Yeah, so, I don't know what that was about, really. It's a little short interview or whatever. Um, in addition to the Emmy I got, I also won the Dutton Best Sports Stories Award, the E.P. Dutton, in 1964, 1965, 1967, 1971, and 1976. Uh, 
went a lot of other stuff, too long to list up. Uh, as I earlier stated, one of the one book that he wrote was The Contender. This book is a lot like my life because uh, I was kind of an outcast as a kid and the main character, Alfred Brooks, was a, a kind of an outcast and neither of us really liked sports until someone came along and put meaning to it. And uh, my dad, when I was young, used to say it's not about uh, being the champion, you gotta be the contender. Being at the top is just an extra reward. And I added that into the contender just because I thought it was like a really good uh, like quote that my dad used to say. I'm not sure where he found it, probably like on the internet, even though there was no internet back then. But you know, yeah, you know, just kind of like my life, now I'm an old dude that's scary and stuff. Yeah, that's it. Hi, Jason.